All he needed was to get a job and start earning money. But Mr. Glass didn't need a window washer today. <sighs> Chef Biscetti didn't need a dish dryer. <sighs> it was one of those days when nobody needed a monkey's help. I only wish I could get an employee with four hands. An employee with four hands? Here was someone who really needed a monkey. The grocer would be so happy with monkey help, George would probably earn that whole oven in one day. Hey, do you work here? Perfect. I need to choose bananas. Could you help me? They need to be super sweet. I'm baking a banana cream pie for my mom. Oh. <laughs> George knew one sure way to find the sweetest tasting bananas. <laughs> These bananas belonged under the counter, not on top. How about the bunch behind you? <laughs> not the bananas in front of you, the ones behind. Thanks. This is the best service I've ever had in any store. Can you please grab me some grapesicles from behind the glass? <laughs> you don't like grapesicles. How about lemon? Can you grab me some lemon sickles instead? <laughs> The lemon sickles are above the grape sickles. Ah! Oh, you don't like lemon sickles. Well, we are running out of sickles. Cherry sickles, fine. Can you grab the cherry sickles? They're above the lemon sickles. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I guess my pyramid wasn't so perfect. What do you have there? It's the diagram for our new window display. It's going to have a tree, colorful balls, and other fun stuff. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Me too, but I can't set it up till my son gets back. I'd better put the diagram in a safe place. Oh. It was here a second ago. The grocer didn't have to wait for his son. George would set up that window display for him. First, he looked for a tree. He found one behind the boxes. <laughs> Colorful balls. And above the balls, he found some stringy fun stuff. <laughs> oh, hi, George. I. Whatever you're paying that monkey, he deserves double. I've never had such helpful service. Me neither. Have you been working here all day? Helping customers? And this? <laughs> hey, Dad, this window display you came up with is pulling in customers. The store's crowded. It is. I guess this is our first annual Christmas in July sale, built by our employee of the month, George. <laughs> Ha! 
guess a city kid wouldn't have seen cross-country skis before. It's the most fun way to travel on deep snow. I've got an old pair of skis you can have. Want to come with me? <laughs> this was fun. George took to skiing like... like a monkey to skiing. George had a great view up here. He could see houses and farms. <laughs> and there was his house. And then he thought he'd better head home right now because the man was making the last of the cocoa. And no one can resist the drink me now power of cocoa. Not even the man with the yellow hat. I wonder what that could be. Uh, I'm gonna go take a quick look around. You wait here. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't good. He was getting even further from home. It was all downhill from here. He figured he'd be home in seconds. There had to be a way to get that ski. One ski was better than none. Yeah! About the only thing that kept him going was the joyous hope of Coco. Now George could see what made that sound. A cold, lost pig. George was almost at the top. The pig was way over there. He didn't even know if he could help. We can't just leave him here. George wondered how a pig got lost all the way up here, and more importantly, how he was going to get it down. What they needed was a sled. Squeal anywhere. It's little Mike. <laughs> he got out last night before it snowed. He's never even seen snow before. Must have been completely mystified by it. Now George realized 
he had to get the feeder far from the tree trunk, so Jumpy couldn't jump to it. No squirrel could jump from the tree trunk all the way over here. <laughs> Problem solved. Dropping straight down seemed dangerous. Then, Jumpy discovered he had another choice. George wanted to stay here and watch happy birds eat. <laughs> Jumpy was at home in trees, so George needed to move the feeder away from trees. But where? There was only one way to stop this squirrel. George stood guard, making sure the birds got their food. This worked. <laughs> he didn't move from that spot till the feeder was empty. This much? What was he doing with it all? Jumpy wasn't eating the food. But why was he bringing it here? Hmm. That's the bowl Bill always filled with squirrel food. Hmm. Of course. Bill wasn't around to fill it, so Jumpy was doing it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So George brought over plenty of food, and Jumpy left the bird feeder alone. There had to be plenty of food, because Jumpy wasn't the only one dining. <laughs> Even with no bunnies to feed, it turned out to be a pretty nice weekend in the country. <laughs> Though this food was definitely for the birds. Alrighty. 
Who bid me a dollar for this amazingly yellow traffic cone? I will. And we got a dollar. Who's gonna bid two? Who's gonna bid two? Gonna bid two? Gonna Never in his whole life had George heard a man talk as fast as Mr. Diddy. And sold to the fellow with the big yellow hat for ten dollars. Yes. <laughs> Those were George's mittens. Or they would be his mittens if George bid on them. All righty, let's start the bidding at a dollar. Who will give me a dollar for these mittens? Me. Huh? OK, we have one dollar. Anyone else? Mm. <laughs> All right, we got two. How about three? Three, three, somebody give me four. Sold to the monkey in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bid for those mittens all by yourself? <laughs> well, you are one smart little monkey. But I knew that. Popcorn? OK, George. Sign here. Ah. That will be $100. Uh, may I see that? <clears throat> George, $100 is a lot of money. Uh, how to explain this? So that's the money you have. Uh huh. And this is how much money you need, but more or less. Huh? <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Huh. George was remembering how hard he worked to earn one dollar. He had to wash Mike the pig. Uh -huh. Twice. To make enough money to pay for the mittens, George would have to wash Mike 100 times. At least. That was a lot of pig. I know. We'll tell Mrs. Wynn you made a mistake and thought the mittens were only $1. Mrs. Wynn is nice. She wouldn't make you pay $100 if she knew you made a mistake. <laughs> $1 is a lot less than $100. The library wouldn't be able to buy as many books. So, we should auction the mittens again and Mr. Glass can buy them for $101. Oh, good idea, Marco. I am always thinking. <laughs> oh, okay, so the bidding will start at $100. <laughs> George? <coughs> Mr. Glass bidding. Here, let me try. Uh, did you notice these mittens have elephants? <laughs> and they're red. And <laughs> there are two of them. <laughs> right, one for each hand or foot. <laughs> Mr. Glass isn't there. Uh-oh, time was running out. If George didn't get these mittens sold, a hundred pigs were going to be very clean. I'll look for Mr. Glass. You keep trying to sell the mittens. Look, they're not just mittens, they're earmuffs. Oh, absolutely. I love those mittens. They're unique. Great. Because George doesn't have $100, so he put them up for auction again so you could buy them and the library could get $101. Only now there's only one minute of bidding time left. One minute? How are we going to get to the auction in one minute? Um? Right. There are two of them. And the wool is from a very nice sheep named uh, Carmen. <laughs> Let's face it, no one's gonna buy those mittens. <laughs> Stop <gasps> those mittens! 
I'll pay a hundred and one dollars. So. This was great. The library had a hundred and one dollars. <laughs> and George didn't have to wash a hundred pigs. <laughs> Still, he would miss his mittens. Don't worry, George. I'll knit you another pair of mittens with giraffes. Ooh. <laughs> Right outside, it was the best game of Cat Tries to Catch a Plane ever. Until... This wasn't here before. It must be what they made from those bones. Gnocchi wanted that plane. George wanted to help Gnocchi get down, but he couldn't reach her. <laughs> Just because it came apart doesn't mean it's ruined, George. it mattered which bone went where. All right, let's see my skeleton. But, but we just ordered dessert. Uh, dessert? Uh, oh, of course, sorry. of course, this memory of mine. But I'm anxious to know how you've handled my precious bones. George's skeleton didn't look as good as that other one, even though they looked almost the same before. <laughs> if they looked the same, he could figure out where the bones belonged by using the other one as a guide. <laughs> so, am I forgetting anything? Or is it now time to see how you've taken care of my baby? <sighs> It's time. Oh, I'm nervous. You have nothing to be nervous about whatsoever. <laughs> George had one side of the skeleton finished. When he noticed... Both sides look the same, except opposite. He could finish by matching the remaining bones to what he'd already done. Gnocchi wished this bone game would end so they could play something cats were good at. I'll admit I'm worried. No one else but I has ever handled those bones before today. Only our best people have been involved. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy. Your best people are a monkey and a cat? George! <laughs> well, this isn't the skull we put on it. It seems George was switching them. I don't know why. I do. The monkey's right. The, the monkey's, monkey's right? <laughs> that old skull never looked right. I think George has correctly matched the cranial structure. Huh? Now I wish I'd loaned this out years ago. I want George to check all my future work. <laughs> And that went on record as the first scientific discovery made by a monkey. Oh! <laughs> Assisted by a cat 
from an Italian restaurant. I forgot this bag of marbles for Mr. Zubel. Is the doorman here yet? <laughs> First a dog's in charge, then a monkey? Next it'll be an elephant. Sign here, please. <laughs> Weirdest day ever. George started delivering the bag right away. He was a great door monkey. Things had to be going better for George. Oh, what a <laughs> Huntley Jr. was a fast eater. Good thing George got some leaves from the tree. But Huntley Jr. didn't like the tree leaves. He only liked the leaves from the flowers. Huntley understood. He only liked one kind of dog food. He and Huntley Jr. were exactly alike. And then, something strange happened. Hundley Jr. dangled down off a stick and stopped moving. Maybe Hundley Jr. needed more food. Hundley had to get more leaves from the flowers fast. When Hundley got to the lobby, he couldn't believe his eyes. Nothing was wrong. George couldn't believe his eyes either. Hundley was dirty and smelled like trash. <gasps> Hundley needed that food, but George didn't want a dirty dog in his clean lobby. <laughs> it was Hundley versus Monkey Hundley. Who would win? Oh, my flowers. Ms. Klopotsnik, that's who. Aren't they? Oh dear, there's milkweed in this bouquet. I'm allergic to milkweed. Well, at least the lobby smelled better now. When Hundley got back, Hundley Jr. was in a tiny sleeping bag. Where did he get that? Hundley would just wait until his friend woke up. He was sure it wouldn't be long. Ah! Oh. Okay, there's trash all over the floor, George is in the lobby, and you're watching a stick? I'm taking your temperature, Hundley. Days and days went by. But Hundley Jr. stayed wrapped up in the hard little bag. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and play. Hmm? Nope. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and sing. Nope. Meanwhile, George kept watching the lobby in the mornings while the doorman was at his class. He did a good job. Most of the time. Two weeks later, the doorman was back to work in the morning. Bye, George. But Hundley Jr. was still sleeping. George knew how to wake him up. <laughs> it looked like their friend would sleep forever. But then the sleeping bag opened and out came a butterfly. Where did Huntley Jr. go? It was empty. But that must mean the butterfly was Hundley Jr. No wonder he'd been so sleepy. It took a lot of work to grow wings. Their little friend had grown up. Puppies turned into dogs, baby monkeys turned into bigger monkeys, and caterpillars turned into butterflies. Hundley was happy his friend was awake. He was a little sad, too, because Hundley Jr. didn't want to live inside anymore. It was a beautiful day. 
A perfect day for flying. They'd miss their friend, but he was ready to leave and go see the world. Thanks to them. Huntley was proud. He'd been a great caterpillar daddy. Hey, lobby monkey! But he'd also learned his job could be done by a monkey. Ah! <laughs> Huntley still did it better, though. My first delivery. How am I going to finish my whole route in time? Hey! If you're not delivering papers, want to pull me around in the snow? I've never used a toboggan before, but so far it's great. Hmm. Thanks for thinking of it, George. Ah. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks, boys. Hang on. Got to steer around this curve. <laughs> Hey, you boys all right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I don't know much about toboggans. I'm not much on snow sports. I guess I spend too much time playing with my trains. Ooh. Maybe there's something else you could use in here instead. George! Then George realized you can steer by leaning. <laughs> George, you're a genius. <laughs> Why didn't I think to lean? That's how we can steer the toboggan. Oh, you better keep the blanket. You might need it. Hang on, George. Here comes the Lake Street Curve. Lean, George. Lean harder than you've ever leaned in your life. They weren't going anywhere. They had run out of hill. And then George realized. <laughs> Great idea, George. We can turn this blanket into a sail and we can zoom over the flats. <laughs> if only he had a couple of poles. From the recycling bins, take anything you want. Thanks. Once their sail was sail-shaped, they needed to attach it to the poles. <laughs> Attaching it to the mast and boom was a breeze. With their sail in place, they'd soon be moving quickly. But their mast blew past. What if we let the boom out so the sail catches the wind? They didn't have to go around the lake. They could go across it. <laughs> Good idea, George. <laughs> you do the honors. <laughs> 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 
Not bad for a city kid. <laughs> She's a real beaut. Couldn't have done it without you, partner. <laughs> because when it came to paper delivery, it was always smooth sailing with Bill. You want to listen to the opera now? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, George, why is there a duster on your head? <laughs> oh, I get it. Since Betsy missed the opera, you want to act it out for her. This was going to be harder than he thought. Ow! George had enough trouble playing one part. How was he going to play them all? And then George realized he had the whole cast right at his fingertips. Now, they just needed costumes. worked great. The actors could come on and go off in a flash. But Hansel and Gretel were the same size as their parents. George needed something bigger for the adults. Oh, uh, no wonder none of my socks match. Smiley sock could be the Sandman. The oven mitts could be mother and father. What? Now what did I do with those mitts? <laughs> but he still needed a witch and a dew fairy. <laughs> Maybe this could be the witch. <laughs> now, where was he going to find a dew fairy? She would have to be magical and pretty and sweet and... George knew just the girl for the job. Once the puppets were done, George needed to create the sets. <laughs> but George couldn't work puppets and sets at the same time. His sets had to be easy to move. <laughs> George taped the pictures he had drawn onto the paper roll. George's opera was ready to roll. George wants to know if we can come over. He has a surprise for Betsy. Hey, what is this? Shh, the show's about to start. Show? Brother, come and dance with me. Both is that Hansel and Gretel? Right foot first, How left cute. foot first, round the boat and back again. Oh, <laughs> 
there's the Sandman. And there they go, off to sleep. Here comes my favorite part. The Dew Fairy. It's me. I'm the Dew Fairy. Scary witch. Oh, be careful. Now you not to run. That was so great, great George. George. Oh, thank you. It was so fantastic, I even forgot to itch. <laughs> Still sorry you missed the opera? No, I'm sure George's was much better. It does make me wonder, though. Oh? How do you feel about ballet? Hmm. Ah! <laughs> 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 